Right, okay then, issue number 62, which is a paint issue. Uh, sometimes these paint issues can be a wealth of information. Uh, so, get these paints out. Now, I'm going to get onto the paints in a second. The good thing is, um, I don't actually have these paints yet. So, well, I, I used to have one of them. I used to have white scar, but uh, it dried up, unfortunately. So let's let's delve into the issue first, number sixty-two, where we have quite a nice bit of artwork of a stone cast in very greeny blue armor, which I like the look of. Uh, looking like they're fighting a combination of Savage Orox, Skaven and a Nurgle guy by the look of it. So let's have a look what we are going into. Now, this is a nice little bit of lore because it's dealing with the atomy of an Oroch. I'm the reason I'm curious about this I've look I'm, I really wanna I, I want to read and see how they describe if they describe what an orc is so the orcs in general from 40k and Warhammer Fantasy Battles, they're a fungus. There's no other way to put it. And I'm just kind of curious if anywhere in this they'll kind of describe. Uh, they seem to describe them as simply coming out of nowhere. So, you know, I'm kind of curious about how they describe them. Because uh, I'm just curious about how, or because uh, although like you've got the gloom spike git who live in caves and are obsessed with funguses, uh, it doesn't technically describe how they come into existence in any of the books that I've read. Um, for those of you who into a wide range of Warhammer stuff. Uh, an orc from Warhammer 40k is a fungus. It grows um, and out of the ground comes whatever kind of orc you need. So it could be an orc warrior, a regular boy, or it could be a squig, or it could be um, a, a grot and they tend to come out specialised in particular areas so they come with the knowledge. In Warhammer Fantasy Battles, the Orc were also fungoid. Uh, they came on the Old One ships, um, hiding away in the Old One ships. That's how Orc incursions can frequently start on human worlds in Warhammer 40k. So... I'm, I mean, I'm kind of curious, um, did Gorkamorka just simply use magic to recreate the Orc race on the realms, or were they actually also carried by spores? Anyway, so it's quite, <laughs> I just love stuff like this. And we do have different types of Orcoids in the Age of Sigmar, because we have the Cruel Boys as well. So, again, it, it, it would be kind of, uh, it'd be a nice thing to find out what an auric is uh, in relation to you know, um, <clears throat> what's it called now? Uh, you know, what kind of creature are they? Are they linked to the orcs of 40k and the orcs of fantasy battles, or are they a completely different kind of creature? Right, uh, what else have we got here? Uh, the goals of a war. We do love a good war. Uh, I'm looking for this one. To match. <laughs> Just some general stuff about what your war's doing and why it's doing it. 
uh, what else have we got here? Um, highlighting techniques. So let's have a look. So it's describing how you can thin out a paint for highlighting, how to use the side of a brush while engaging in highlighting. Oh, uh, right, so yeah, this is quite good. Quite specific tips on when you would use the side of a brush, when you would use the tip of a brush. Metallics, yeah, but, but on how to highlight in metallics, uh, suggestions on how to approach painting faces. Again, I'm probably thinking that I'm going to read that because it's probably. Skin tones are probably one of my weakest areas. And then specifically how to use white scar and a sybarite green. What have we got here? Right, so, um, and then we're moving on to destruction tactics, sneaky snufflers in a squig herd, uh, flame and fury, ashes to ashes. So this is our linked battle narrative that we're going to, you know, obviously delve into. Um, so, paint. Uh, white scar. So basically, you use white scar if you want a proper white, so a very lighter coloured white. Uh, to be honest, you won't tend to find you'll use that um, on a lot of wide areas. I tend to, to use this as a highlighting colour only, <clears throat> just because... As a lot of people might tell you, uh, if you ever try and paint an entire model in white, uh, it, it will not it will not look good. Um, the best thing to do is use lots and lots of shades of grey and build up the colour, and then highlight key areas with white. Uh, this one's quite a lovely colour as well. I like this. It's uh, it's got a very um, I don't know, It's I can't really describe its exact colour, really. I suppose you could call it a mint green. Yeah, it's a very minty coloured green. Again, uh, I'd love to use that. F and th again, because it's a very vi vibrant, bright green, uh, great for highlighting. Uh, <clears throat> right, so there we go. That's our issue number 62. Uh, that's me done with the main issues, but I've got one more special issue up and coming.